Okay, so welcome to Factoring with the GCF. This is the third video in the Factoring series. So if you have not watched the rest of them, you should definitely go back and to watch the rest of them. This video is gonna be a lot because we're doing a lot of GCF stuff in this video. So my suggestion to you is that you take out a sheet of paper <laughs> before we get started so that you can take some notes, learn along with me, try to see if you can get the answer before I do, stuff like that. Let go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. So first we're going to talk about trinomials when A is negative. Okay, so anytime you have a negative coefficient, you definitely want to take that negative out first. So you're going to take the negative out first and then you're gonna put it on the outside and then change the sign of everything on the inside. So with the letters up there, everything that was positive becomes negative. Easy. Um, and then you do what's called factoring what's left on the inside. So whatever's on the inside of the parentheses, whether it's an A equals one problem or A is greater than one problem, you would then go ahead and uh, factor it whatever's necessary. Okay, so factor out the negative. So if there is a negative in the front of your problem, you want to factor it out. Negative one. So what I'm going to do is the orange stuff that's on the inside, I'm going to factor it. And what I know is that it is A equals one. So all I do is look at C. C is eight. So I'm going to find factors of eight. One times eight, two times four. Which one can give me a negative nine? One and eight. But the negative, both numbers have to be a negative to make this happen. But once I know that, I factor that and minus one and minus eight, but don't forget the one. You could just put a minus in front or a whole negative one, whatever works, okay? So that's basically factoring out a GCF. Let's do the next one. Negative x squared plus 16 x minus 63. Factor out the negative. So you're gonna take a negative one out and I know to do that because there's a minus in the front of my problem. Only when it's in the front, I factor out a negative. So I have a negative one, x squared minus 16 x plus 63. The orange part, just the orange part, forget the negative one on the outside for now, is a a equals one problem, which we learned about in the first video. So I'm just gonna find factors of 63. 63, one times 63, three times 21, seven times nine. And seven and nine is what's gonna give me a 16 only if both numbers are negative. Make sure that when you're factoring, you don't forget your negative one on the outside. So X minus seven, X minus nine, and negative one on the outside. Yes, so easy. So I'm gonna give you one to try on your own because it's that easy, right? Uno minuto. Time's almost up. Do, 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 do. Ba -da -boop -boop. Boop. Okay, so first we want to factor out that negative. Yes. And it's an A equals one problem, so I'm going to take the 8, which is the C value, and we're going to find 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Which one can give us a 9? A negative 9 to be specific. Actually, was that the same example I just did? I think it was. Whatever. Try on your own. One minute. Show navigator. Hint, this is not an A equals one problem. It is an A is greater than one problem. So you have more steps to solving this problem, ladies and gentlemen. Beware. Oh, 
we getting there. We getting there. And time. Okay. So we'll take out the negative, leave everything else, change the signs. But the inside of this problem is that A is greater than one problem. So my life is a little bit more complicated. So I have to do six times 25, which is 150. I have to find factors of 150. So that is going to be one times 150, two times 75, three times 50, four doesn't go into 150, but five times 30 does, six times 25 does, and 10 times 15. Which one is going to give me a 25, 25, okay? Um, some people might say 30 minus five, but that would give us a negative 150 when we multiply them, so it has to be 10 times 15, because both of those can be positive. So again, this is the long problem. You can't just be like x, minus, x plus 10, x plus 15. You gotta put it in a fraction, simplify your fractions. Why did that go out of order? <laughs> and then your answer, don't forget your negative. Okay, so that's negative GCFs. So let's go ahead and talk about factoring binomials with only a GCF. This is a lot of times where people start with factoring. Why am I not doing that? I don't know, but here we are, okay? So sometimes GCFs are a letter, sometimes they're a number, sometimes they're both. So, but you have to start by asking yourself, what do the numbers have in common? Four and 48, what do they have in common? Well, they have four in common. What about B squared and B? So then after you look at your numbers, you look at your variables, okay? So you have B and B squared. They have a B in common. So 4B is what I would call my GCF. I take the 4B on the outside, what's left on the inside is a B, and what's left is a minus 12. I know I'm right because if I redistributed, 4B times B is B squared, 4B squared, 4B times negative 12 is negative 48B. That's how you know you're right, when you can go backwards and forwards and get the same answer, okay? So try on your own, 20 seconds, but I feel like this is only 10 seconds. Negative six is my GCF, B squared minus three on the inside. Remember, GCF stands for greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. Okay, uh, 20 seconds. Chords everywhere. Mm. Time, wow, quick. The GCF is just B. So inside I have B minus 12. That was easy, right? Right. So let's be more complicated. So let's say we're doing trinomials um, with GCFs. I have to simplify the GCF first, okay? Sometimes when you're looking for a greatest common factor, you look for the GCF first, and then you decide if it's A is greater than B, I mean, A is greater than one, or A is less, or A is equal to one. Wow, I cannot talk. Uh, okay, so let's say I have two X squared plus four X plus six. Sometimes all the numbers have something in common. So I take out the common number, which is two in this case. Sometimes all the variables have something in common. So in this case, there's an X in common with everything. And then sometimes it's both. So you wanna take out a number and a variable, voila, okay? These are the three different scenarios that you can look for. Just a number, just a variable, or a combination of both. 2x squared minus 2x minus 24. Looking at your numbers, 2, 2, 24, what do they have in common? Factor out the GCF, 2. Good, I'm left with x squared minus x minus 12. Factor the orange part, just the orange part, people. That is that a is equal to 1. So I'm going to take 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Which one can give me a negative 1 in the middle? Not 2 and 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. 6 minus 2 is 4. That's not going to work. 1 plus 12 is 13. 12 minus 1 is 11. 3 plus 4 is 7, but 4 minus 3 is 1. So what if I did four, 3 minus 4 to give me that negative 1? Cha-ching. Don't forget your GCF. So your GCF is 2. Make sure you put that in front. And then x plus 3, x minus 4. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. So again, when you're looking at your problems for GCFs, you take out the GCF, factor the inside, bring down the GCF. Sometimes your GCFs are a number, sometimes they're a letter, sometimes they are both, okay? 
Um, so in this case, I'm looking at 4x cubed minus 28x squared plus 40x. What do the numbers have in common? 4, 28, and 40. A 4. Good. x cubed, x squared, x. What do they have in common? An x. Great. So we're going to factor out that GCF and 4x. What's going to be left on the inside? 4x cubed divided by 4x gives me x squared. 28x squared divided by 4x gives me negative 7x. And then 40x divided by 4x just gives me a 10. Um, I love that. So I'm going to look at the orange part. And I'm going to factor. I got that little 10. 2 times 5. 1 times 10. Which one's going to give me a 7 in the middle and a negative 7 at that? Not the 1 and the 10, baby. But definitely the 2 and the 5. But they both have to be negative to make this work. Because negative times negative is a positive. So good, so good. Don't forget that GCF. So always bring down your GCF and then factor x minus 2, x minus 5. Because y'all be forgetting that GCF and you get mad when you get those points off. Okay, try on your own. This is going to be an a is greater than 1 problem. Time. So, do I have a number? Do I have a variable? Or do I have a combination of both for my GCF, my greatest common factor? In this case, we just have a number. 9, 66, and 21 have a 3 in common. So, I take out that 3 and I'm left with 3k squared plus 22k plus 7. The blue part of this problem is that A is greater than 1 problem, which means my problem is longer. I bet you guys forgot that, okay? So I'm going to do 3 times 7, which is 21. And I'm going to find factors of 21. 1 times 21, 3 times 7. Which one can give me a 22? Well, the 21 and the 1, of course, when I add them together. But I can't just say x plus 1 and x plus 21. Remember, this is the longer way. I have to do 3k over 1 and do 3k over 21 and simplify my fractions, okay? So I simplify my fractions, I get 3 over 21 simplifies to 1 over 7. So my answer is that purple 3 on the outside. That was my GCF. Don't forget that. Common mistake. And then 3k plus 1 and k plus 7. Phew. You ready to try another one by yourself? You're like, no, but you're going to. One minute on the clock. Remember, you can have a GCF that's a number, you can have a GCF that's a variable, or you can have a GCF that is both, baby. So in this case, my GCF is both. I have a number 2, 2 is in common with 2, 2, and 12, and x cubed, x squared, and x all have an x in common. So 2x is my GCF. Did you just say 2? Shame on you. Okay, so I have x squared plus 1x minus 6. Why did I write that 1 in front of that x? I don't need that 1. That's baby stuff. Okay, so the blue part is just 8 equals 1. So that means I'm just going to do 6. 1 times 6, 2 times 3. Which one can give me a 1 by addition or subtraction? <gasps> the 2 and the 3, of course. So, yes, honey, the 2 has to be negative. And then don't forget to write your GCF. Yay, us. 2x, x plus 3, x minus 2. I got a big one for you, so brace yourselves. Let's go. One minute. You might need longer than a minute, but. <laughs> Ooh.
time. Okay, is it a number? Is it a variable? Or is it a number and a variable? Well, 12, 60, and 27 have what in common? A three, good. X to the fourth, X cubed, and X squared all have what in common? X squared. I bet you just said X, didn't you? Be better. You're getting better though. We're just learning. So four X squared plus 20 X plus nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the blue part is what kind of problem? Is it an A is equal to one problem or is it an A is greater than one problem? It is an A is greater than one problem because of that four in front of the X squared. So that means I have to do the long way. So I'm gonna have to do four times nine equals 36. One times 36, two times 18, three times 12. 4 times 9, 6 times 6. Which one is going to give me a 20 in the middle? Which one's going to give me a 20 in the middle? Uh, 2 and 18, of course. Yes, we love 2 and 18. So um, I can't just say x plus 2 and x plus 18, right? Because it's the long way because of that 4 in front of the x squared. So a is greater than 1 problem, so I have to set up fractions. And I have to simplify those fractions. We all love fractions so much. Ooh, this one, I have to simplify both. It'd be that way sometimes. But now that I've done it, 3x squared, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 9. My very long, lengthy answer. I'm just tired of looking at that answer. I'm just tired of looking at that page. It's okay. You got this. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Um, last one, ladies and gentlemen. On your mark, get set. time what's my GCF letter number combo it's just a number and that number is four look at that blue part on the inside what kind of problem is that blue part a equals one or a is greater than one that is a, a is greater than one so we gotta do the long process <laughs> four times 25 is 100 one times 100 two times 50 three times nothing four times 25 five times 20 Six times nothing, seven times nothing, eight times nothing, nine times nothing, ten times ten. I'm going to find a combo that's going to give me a 15, okay? It's going to be 5 and 20 only if the 5 is negative. 4 be over negative 5, 4 be over 20. Simplify your fractions. 4 over 20 simplifies to 1 over 5. Bring down your GCF and bring down your factors. Look at you, you factored using GCF. I'm so proud of you. That does it for this third installment of factoring uh, the series. Uh, at the end of every video, I say go back, watch the video again. See if you can do the problems on your own without my help. And then if not, I'll see you in the next one.